Bonus! Oh, the bonus thing landed on me! Oh, I thought it was a portal. Oh, that's the worst bonus ever. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the PS3 classic known as Super Stardust HD, a game created by House Mark Mark Marquet. Oh God, how do you say that? House Mark Marquis Marquet House Mark. It, it looked French to me. Either way, this game is. Uh, <laughs> it looks like it was produced in 200 and question mark, but it's 2007 Super Stardust HD. So it's about 10 years old at this point. But the weird thing is that this kind of game will forever feel like a new game to me. Like, in my head, old games are like NES games. And, like, this feels still new, despite the fact that this is actually arguably a retro game to many, many people, uh, which is pretty interesting. So, uh, the computer here is kind of showing us what's what, giving us a preview of this game. This game is a combination of asteroids... It's kind of like asteroids on crack, if you can see what the heck's happening here. It's like, I don't know what's happening to this planet, but, like, every asteroid in the universe has decided to land on this sole planet. And they have managed to muster a single ship to defend themselves. In fact, honestly, it doesn't even look like asteroids. It looks like, uh... <laughs> well, use your imagination. I'm not gonna say, because this is a wholesome, wholesome channel. But it, it looks... It looks pretty gross as to what's happening to this planet here. So they managed to get a single ship, and as you can see, it's sort of like asteroids ramped up to 11. It also has um, sort of whispers of Geometry Wars, if you guys have ever played that. That's actually a great game in and of itself, and I will be checking that out on my channel um, in the not-too-distant future, although not-too-distant for me it could be anywhere from, like, you know, six months to a year. But anyway, at some point we will check it out. And without further ado, let's ourselves go ahead and hop in here and give Super Stardust HD a run for its money. Solo pack available in online store. Well, thanks for that. I'm just going to go ahead and play. So we have arcade mode and planet mode. Planet mode lets you play one planet at a time just to check them all out. Let's go ahead and start with arcade mode, see how well I can do. And then when I invariably die on the first level, we'll switch over to planet mode and we can try some of the uh, other planets. So select the level of difficulty. The game will loop uh, to a harder difficulty level when completed. Easy mode with its own high score list. The game will not loop to a harder difficulty when the game is completed. No, we definitely want to go for for normal. That that's that. It's nice that they're telling you exactly the difference uh, between easy and normal. In in a lot of games, just pick easy or normal. You have no idea what different. You're like I don't know. I guess enemies are easier to kill. Things are slower. I have no idea. But uh, it's nice that they kind of give you an idea of what's to come. So there are five planets, two of which we can try. I guess I might have to unlock these to try them in planet mode. So I guess we have to play in arcade mode, and hopefully I do good enough that we can at least see three. That'd be my goal, three planets. So Lave, uh, Coventina. I'm terrible at pronouncing things, guys. This might be Lav or Lave, but la we'll say Lave because I like to add a little flair to my pronunciations. Coventina, uh, Nemain. Uh, Tyrannus and Sagomo. Tyrannus sounds like it's ruled by the House Harkonnen. It just has sort of that dinosaur T-Rex kind of sound to it. All right, so boost bomb, previous and next weapon, and move and shoot. All right, kind of like Smash TV where you move in one direction and shoot, uh, you know, independently of where you're moving. Um, I remember when I first played Smash TV, that was, it was mind-blowing that controls could be like that and I couldn't play the game, but like nowadays it's actually not uncommon to play games like that, you know, like with Pixel Junk Shooter and uh, other games like that, and Geometry Wars, of course. Anyway, shoot asteroids for tokens. Tokens degrade over time, and you can get things. Efficient weapon usage. Okay, so for gold, oh, this is easy. For, for the gold rocks, which looked brown to me in the intro, you gotta use gold weapons. For ice rocks, use ice weapons. And for rocks, use green weapons. That makes sense. I love when games are just intuitive like that. All right, here we go. I'm protecting Planet Blue. Planet Blue Gun. Blue Gun has has made the call to Gaming J. Gaming J, asteroids are coming for us. They will not respond to negotiations or diplomacy. We need you and your amazing spacecraft to come and save us. And I'm like, you got it, Blue Gun. And then when I arrive, they have this like really effective shield that's just bouncing asteroids right off of their whole planet. And I'm like, did you guys really need me? Or is it more like, you know, you just had to sort of like, 
spend your mercenary budget before the end of the fiscal quarter or else you're not going to get a mercenary budget last year. Like you don't get refunded for, for mercenary budgets that you, you don't use. So you just got to spend that money. Is that what's going on? I don't know. Um, so the game is, as I say, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the descendant of Asteroids. Remember Asteroids even had a sequel called Blasteroids, which we played. And that was okay. It was, it was a fun game. Um, but I think Asteroids is definitely more iconic. But this game... This game could have been called Asteroids 3D or something. Like, it, it really does have that sort of Asteroids uh, flair and feel to it. Oh, yeah, we can boost. Kabloom! That was, that was us boosting there. Um, but it sort of has this, obviously, a 3D element, which is actually pretty cool. So, like, rather than being stuck in a 2D plane, you are protecting a sphere. Um, I don't know what the goal of this is. Like, are we supposed to just kill, like, every asteroid? And, like, what are these green ones? Um, ooh! They give you power-ups. Okay, new mission. Kill the green ones. The gold melter. Ah, there's the gold melter. Oh, there's the ice gun. Okay, so I have different guns already. The gold melter. Let's just keep upgrading. I, I, <laughs> Here I am like an idiot, just shooting the asteroids with my, my default weapon. Meanwhile, the trick is you want to get all these... Uh, you want to get these power-ups, man. You want to get weapon upgrades. One thing I've learned in video games... Is upgrade your freaking weapons because it is is always the way to go. So we're on a new mission, hunt the green things. They're like, hey, Big J, there's giant asteroids coming towards the southern pole. I'm like, yeah, but there's a lot of green things kind of in the western continent. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna focus on them first. Also, your shield that is like it does not look like you needed me to protect you from asteroids because the the planetary shield you've got going on here is highly effective. If anything, it kind of feels like. They just want me to clean up the asteroids. Like, I'm not an asteroid mercenary so much as I am just, like, a janitor. They're like, well, the shield has us protected, but, like, if, you know, we don't blow up these asteroids, it's just going to be like, we're going to look up and see all asteroids at night. It's going to be a total buzzkill. We need someone to come and kind of, like, sweep away the, like, space debris. Gaming J is good for that. So we beat phase one. Now on to phase two, where enemies are tougher, the asteroids are meaner, and uh, they're, what are these things? These are actual bad guys. I guess we were fighting them at the end of the last round. I didn't really say anything about them. Um, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're like the uh, the pawns of the like enemies. Oh, look at this. You can like shoot, shoot the containers off of the ship. Interesting. Okay, I want these containers. What's in them? Something awesome has got to be in them. Bombs! We got bombs. Nuke the planet. Look at that giant asteroid. You just ricocheted right off the whole planet. Wow. Um, but yeah, the uh, those like uh, red enemies or whatever really look like just the most basic henchmen. Like they weren't even given a weapon. They're like the bad guys in the first level from Contra, where they're like, you know, the the like head bad guys. Like, look, guys, just just run towards the players. And they're like, you're not gonna give us a gun or anything. He's like, okay, I'll give you one. Some of you will get one bullet. Most of you will get nothing. And the guys with one bullet run on the screen, fire that one bullet, and they're like, well, that's it. I guess I'll just run towards the enemy. Um, although they are like. Like, when you do touch the enemy, they kill you. You don't kill them, so... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what... Maybe their clothes are, like, electric or something. I don't even know. So, Super Stardust HD here um, has kind of an interesting history on the PS3. It was it was the first to do a lot of things, if you can believe it. Um, I mean, first of all, by the way, it had a ton of DLC packs, which is odd to think for, like, a game like this. Like, what... What could you DLC onto this? But it did have a lot of DLC packs that added uh, different modes. Like there was an impact mode, which, uh, oh God, if memory serves correct, that you only got one life and you just had to sort of survive off that one life. Or maybe there was a different mode uh, that was like that. Because there was a, a handful of DLC packs. There was like multiplier add-ons and multiplayer add-ons. It was also um, the first game to use trophies. Yeah, you know trophies in PS3, like you do stuff in a video game and it's like you've, you've achieved passing the tutorial, you know, and like you get some trivial trophy that nobody really cares about. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've talked about trophies before and how like, they're not like a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. Well, these snakes are actually really tricky. But uh, the trophies I definitely sort of, I mean, I don't find that they do much for me. Like I don't really care about trophies and I... Like, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, like, never look at my trophies. I might have, like, 100,000 trophies saved up from, like, years of playing on my PS3 here, my Xbox 360. But, like, I don't know. Whatever. Like, ooh, I got another trophy. Who cares? Uh, but, I mean, that's just me. Um, a lot of people care about the trophies, and so good for them. Not, not knocking anyone who does. But this game was the first to... 
Um, have trophies. Let's use a bomb. Oh wait, that just switched my weapon. Kaboom! We bombed the screen. Okay, let's switch back to our rock crusher. I want to switch to different weapons. Why aren't there there different colored rocks, man? Like here, we could use this thing. It's good against the enemies, I guess. Let's just use this. I know it's not the most effective thing for killing the rocks, but I just want to use a different weapon, damn it. I'm tired of using the rock crusher. It sucks. It's just so boring. Anyway, this game was the first to have um, to have trophies, which is kind of amazing. I would not have picked this game, but I mean, I guess, you know, when the PS4 first came out, I remember going to like Best Buy and seeing one on display, and I think either this because they did make they did remake this for the ps4 or a game very similar to this was one of the f only games they had at the time that you could play so i mean i guess it kind of makes sense in the in the sense that this is like a very basic easy to program kind of game they could like get it out there as soon as the console launches and like it is fun even though it's like basic and easy for them to produce so yeah i guess it makes sense it would be one of the first games to have uh, trophies it was also the first game, or one of the earliest games, I think. I, I can't say it's the first, but it, in back in 2010, they demonstrated a 3D, a stereoscopic 3D version of this game at CES. Which, you know, like now they have the Project Morpheus and stuff, and there actually are 3D games. Back in 2010, this game was in 3D. One of the earliest games to be in 3D, I believe. Um, and so, yeah, like... You know, this game, it's like you would not expect it. You would not expect, oh yeah, this is the first one to have trophies. This is the first one of the first ones to be in 3D. It's like, really? Really? This? This game? It's it's kind of interesting. It's sort of like this game was the experimental test bed for a lot of, like, concepts. You know, like, at, at like, Sony headquarters, they're like, man, what can we do next? And somebody's like, how about achievements? And they're like, yo, we need, like the most versatile experimental test bed we can get and they're like let's go to super stardust or where they're like you know oh like we need uh we need to figure out how to make things in 3d and they're like super stardust is our go-to let's crack it open and get into that sort that sweet sweet source code and make this puppy 3d and they're like are you sure this is the best choice they're like yes do not say bad things about super stardust i will kill you all like, maybe somebody at Sony just really loves Super Stardust, and they're like, it has to be the first for everything. It must be. Um, which, I don't know, fair enough. I mean, as I say, this this game is sort of a callback to uh, games like, uh-oh, enemies are here. Let's actually use, like, a real gun. Oh, let's try the, the ice gun. Why not? Boom, 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 boom. It actually see, it, it kind of feels like these other weapons I've been using are just as effective at killing the rocks as my rock crusher gun. So, like, why would I use anything? What's the point of... <laughs> of using uh, the rock crusher. I'm just gonna keep using this. Boom! We're beating the game, man! I don't know how many phases there are, but I feel like we're doing pretty good. I'm, I'm confident we might be able to get to a third planet, although it is taking a while. It is taking a while to kind of get through the planets here. Uh, but definitely feels like uh, Geometry Wars with the, like, uh, different kinds of enemies. I mean, the, the asteroids part feels like asteroids, but as soon as the enemies show up, it feels like Geometry Wars. So it's an interesting mishmash of games. I wonder which came first, by the way, this or Geometry Wars. I'd have to look that up. I, I couldn't say off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, this is like a test bed game, basically. It actually kind of reminds me, like, when I was in high school, there was a McDonald's uh, near us uh, that we walked to every day for lunch. It's so terrible. Like, every single day. I didn't go to the cafeteria. My mom didn't pack me lunch. We went to McDonald's. And I remember there was always the McDonald's that we went to was like some kind of experimental McDonald's where they would serve sandwiches I've never heard of anywhere else. And to this day, I've never seen again. Oh, we died. Damn. Does it take away all our power ups? Our sweet, sweet power ups? We do have like six lives, I believe. A bunch of bombs. I should be w way more liberal with the bombs because I'm not going to. You can't take them with you. Okay, here, let's. Let's knock this out and. Uh, Oh god, kablu! <laughs> I don't know the buttons. Okay, gold. Yeah, okay, we gotta switch our weapon. Oh god, things are getting a little intense here. Damn it! They got us again. And we only have five lives left. Let's go to our ice gun. I feel confident with the ice gun. Um, but anyway, the experimental McDonald's. Yeah, I remember every single day we go, we get like the experimental combo, which was like a McRib, which I have heard of before, or like a special McDouble, like a McDouble LT or whatever that they had in the 80s, but they were thinking of bringing back. Um, I can't even remember like all the different burgers, but I remember you could always get the like experimental combo, which was a little cheaper than like a, like a Big Mac or something. 
and you could get extra large fries and a kitty sized drink. And it came to 389. Oh, game over! I thought I had like six lives. Anyway, um, okay, let's let's try a, a different planet. Let's try Coventina. Let's see what it's like. So I guess we're not gonna unlock the third planet, which is a little too bad. But I mean, the first planet took us like 15 minutes. So, um, all right, now, no, now we're. <laughs> oh God, well, that that is a poor start. If ever I saw one. So now we have to kill the gold. Gold asteroid. If gold started raining from space on Earth, it would be terrifying because it could kill us all, but it would also be awesome because we'd all be rich. Because it'd be gold everywhere. Gold in the streets. Um, so I imagine the people on Coventina are pretty happy about all the gold that's just appearing in their uh, planet solar system. Um, anyway, the experimental McDonald's was totally awesome. And you would always get supersized fries, a child sized Coke, and like you would just refill that thing like eight times. Um, while you were in the McDonald's having lunch there, and yes, it was uh, it, it was uh, three dollars and eighty nine cents. I remember that very precisely, and like to the point where like again, I had it every day for lunch with my friends. It was so terrible for our health. I don't know. We must have the arteries of like eighty year old men, you know, for doing that through all of high school. But to the point where like they would hire new McDonald's employees, and like we would recognize the regulars. So when there was a new person, we knew they were new. And uh, when they rung up our combo and it didn't come to 3D9, we'd be like, oh, actually, you have to hit, like, you know, the meal combo button to make sure that uh, the kitty-sized drink is counted as part of the combo. Yeah, don't worry, it happens all the time. Like, we would be correcting them. That's how much we went. So, I mean, I figure either my arteries were completely destroyed by my uh, high school eating habits, or they were, like, hardened. Not in the way that they get hardened by cholesterol, but, like, toughened up. And I have like, you know, super like Wolverine style arteries that can just like regenerate them. So I like to believe that I might have Wolverine style arteries because the, the alternative that, uh, that my arteries are in dire, dire straits is, is not a good thought. Uh, happy to the doctor though, this is getting kind of personal, but uh, I don't think I have significant arterial problems at the moment. So that's good. If you, don't worry about me guys, uh, I'm doing just fine. I am saving a planet from gold that is raining from the sky. Man, imagine, imagine somebody called you and they were like, yo, we got gold that's coming down to our planet. Can you just take care of it? You'd be like, yep. <laughs> like, let me let me get a giant dump truck of a spaceship and I will just cargo all of that sweet, sweet gold away for you. Don't worry about it. You don't even have to pay me. You don't even have to pay me. I'm just, I'm going to, I, I'm a charitable, very charitable guy. I'm a very charitable space mercenary. What the heck happened? Did I complete the level or did I die? I guess I completed it. Okay. Oh god. These little like uh, ice things are kind of tricky actually because they like they they run away from your weapon, which makes sense. They're the smartest the smartest enemies that I've seen yet because they actually try and avoid you, but it makes them like annoyingly difficult to shoot. Also, I feel like my my uh, my like little gun here, my like laser flamethrower thingy it kind of feels like a ghostbusters proton pack actually like it, it feels more like a laser beam that could catch ghosts or something i kind of like it um so this is an older school style of video game i guess you should comment on that you know the fact that it's kind of like a marathony game where you basically are just playing kind of forever i mean it actually isn't in a in a weird way because it does have multiple planets and stuff but if you think back to like Asteroids or ga even games like Tetris and, and Pac-Man stuff, Donkey Kong, um, you know, like the, the classic video games, it's like there was no end. You know, video games didn't used to have an end. It's kind of interesting to think that it was an innovation to figure out the game should have a beginning, a middle and an end, you know, because way back in the day, it's like games just you played them forever. You know, there was no, you know, what do you mean an end to Pong? No. I mean, you can get the high score, but then you just play again, and you play again, and you play again, and Pong never ends. Pong is life. Pong is love. You know, like, it's Pong is a lifestyle. It's not a game that ever ends. Um, and a lot of video games are like that. It's like Asteroids. What do you mean the, the end of Asteroids? There is no end to Asteroids. The Asteroids will never stop coming to kill you. You have to fight them forever. Same with Space Invaders. They're never going to stop invading from space. They're just... It's happening. Get used to it, basically. Um... And I feel like this game is kind of of the same mentality of, you know, it's... I mean, definitely there are stages and stuff in different planets, so you can technically get to the end. Um, but I, I think that's just because this game is, uh, you know, a little more modern, and it's after the innovation that games could have ends, 
has kind of come around. Oh god, and could have levels and stuff. So it's interesting to just sort of think about like how far uh, little little things have come. You know, like you might not even think about it. For most video games you play, you just take you assume, take it for granted that games have ends. But again, it's something that kind of had to be invented at a point. So uh, we're doing far less good at protecting. What, what's the name of this planet again? Colantima or whatever the heck it was called. Um, I have a feeling... Oh, God, that's the biggest asteroid I have ever seen in my life. Holy crap, they're getting bigger. Wow. Like, that asteroid was as big as the planet. That was, like, almost as big as the planet. I like killing those UFO things. See, like, this one over here? It's like it. my beam just, like, connects to it and does not let it go until it dies. Let's kill this guy, too. Kaboom! Oh! A UFO landed on me. Is that game over? Ah, that's game over. All right, let's go in here. Uh, let's see what our options are, by the way. We could be playing this game in different languages! Why would we want to do that, though? There's really no point. <laughs> okay, let's go in... Uh, there's no other planets, eh? All right, well, let's let's go back to, to Lave, or Lave, or uh, Lave, or whatever you want to say it. And uh, let's start wrapping up our thoughts on this game because I kind of feel like we've, you know, we've seen the game. Um, we know what it's about. We know what's going on. We got, we get the idea. Kaboom! Well, oh, that was me using a bomb. Here's me going booster right through the asteroid. Let's let's take advantage of these boosts. Why not? Okay, boost. Okay, maybe maybe we should play for a little longer now that I'm kind of experimenting with the booster, just for fun. But yeah, like this rock cutter weapon, I kind of feel like it sucks. Like, this weapon feels way more effective. I like, like, wiggling it like this to try and, like, widen its berth of, uh, of, of targeting area. Also, I feel like there's... Uh, I was expecting kind of more upgrades to the weapons. It kind of feels like once you upgrade each weapon once, it's kind of like, that's it. And then all they do is give you points. Like, you go for, like, the little green glowy things, try and get more upgrades, and it's nothing but points. So I guess, I guess, uh, you know, in terms of thinking of this game... So, first of all, it, it, it is very much in the vein of Asteroids. If you grew up playing Asteroids, um, you you might actually enjoy this game. You might sort of find that, hey, this is like, it kind of reminds you of Asteroids, but it also feels upgraded. So this might be the kind of game that you enjoy. Also, if you like games like Geometry Wars, you know, these sort of old school arcade marathon games that don't really have ends. I mean, technically this does, technically there are levels, but it's it's different than like, a game like Mario or something, or Zelda, where like every level is very different. It's like here it's very similar, and it's just there's more stuff, and it's all about like, can your skills keep up with the increasing difficulty? But every level is essentially very similar, very similar to being the same. What what is this? 16? 15? What what is this? 14? I I want to find out what happens when we get to zero. 11. 10? I'm counting! It's teaching me numbers. This game also has an educational element, apparently. It's like, we didn't just want to teach people how to destroy asteroids, we also wanted to teach basic arithmetic and counting. This game technically falls under the... We can legally sell this as uh, an educational video game, an edutainment game. Bonus! Oh, the bonus thing landed on me! Oh, I thought it was a portal! Oh, that's the worst bonus ever! Okay, well that's what happened. <laughs> Let's boost through this. Um, I like the boost. I wish I was using it more um, while we were playing. But yeah, this uh, if if you do if you did grow up playing Asteroids and you like the sort of marathon -y games like Tetris or Geometry Wars or whatever, I could see you like enjoying this game. I could see it. Um, on the flip side, I feel like I wish there were more upgrades to things. I feel like one upgrade per weapon is kind of lame, to be totally honest. Like in Geometry Wars, you can upgrade your gun like crazy, and you can get all sorts of uh, crazy upgrades. But here it kind of feels like it's like one and done. It's like you you have your weak weapon, you have your upgraded weapon, and then that's basically it. And it's like, yeah, that's okay, but I just kind of wish there was more. I wish there was more variety in the power-ups. You know, like even in Contra, there were like all sorts of different weapons. It'd be cool if you could get like different versions of each weapon. So it's like there were three or four different kinds of like fire weapon, and you could, you know, then it'd be like a risk-reward thing where like, or preference thing where like, you see a power-up that will upgrade your flame weapon, but it's like, oh, it'll upgrade it to a kind of, a version of the flamethrower that I don't really want, so I'm gonna wait for a different kind, you know? Like, that would be cool. I wish there were, it feels like that's kind of missing. It feels like this game should have it. Like, it's advanced enough and pretty enough and, and done well enough that it, it should have it, but it's kind of missing it. 
So ultimately, you know, uh, this game is a game in the book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die. And I, I think it's it's a reasonable game to to recommend to people. It's a game that's going to appeal again to very a very sort of niche audience of people. Um, it definitely is like not a bad one to sort of pick up and play. I mean, I always found Geometry Wars that that way, where like, you know, I didn't go and play Geometry Wars that much, but it was nice having on my console, and I could just pick up and play if I just wanted to kill like half an hour, and like, uh, you know, it was very skill based and rewarding when you could get far. So I understand why this game um, was on the PS3 and one of the first games on the PS4, I believe. Uh, definitely it's been ported to the PS4 and upgraded. It's called Super Stardust Ultra on the PS4. So it's even, it's be, it's passed beyond HD into Ultra D. You cannot, it, it's beyond high definition. Like no human eye can actually perceive what is on the Ultra level. And that's the level of uh, video game graphics that the Ultra version is showing. So yeah, uh, it, it might be a game you want to pick up. Um, but it just, just depends, it just depends. But anyway, those are my thoughts on this game. What do you guys think? Do you uh, do you own Super Stardust HD? Do you play it? Do you have any hot tips for us? Do you not have any interest in this game at all after seeing it? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always interested to hear your guys' take on the games that I check out. As always, guys, it has been fun hanging out with you and checking this game out. If you agree, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, tell all your family and friends to do the same. I'm going to give you guys a show as I sign off here. Here, look at this. It's a Gaming J Spectacular. Oh, God, am I dying here? Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Gaming J Spectacular. Until next time, don't do a spectacular because it's just going to end in your death. And you guys take care of yourselves. Peace. Oh, I would have been using the bombs like crazy. Um, Manny... Manny the bear pig? What the heck?